It's just your old hillbilly uncle, Uncle Larry. How you doing? You know, um, I got this old 66 telly back from Groons a couple days ago. The boys in the back room did a beautiful refret on this old transition logo. Six pound animal. This thing is light as a feather. Beautiful guitar. I bought it off the reverb a while back. Um, I'm really glad I did. This is a cool telly. But I wanted to tell you guys about some crazy shit I got going on tomorrow. You guys remember when uh, this, there's a 90% chance this is going to happen. So it'll be great and fun if it does. But uh, if it doesn't happen, if I can't pull it together, then don't kill me, okay? But I'm just going to tell you about it anyway. You remember when we did that session for Drew at Guitar House? And um, we streamed it from the studio while we were making a record with all the cameras. That guy that owns that studio is an amazing drummer named uh, Dorian Crozier. He's gonna, we're gonna, me and him are gonna do a, a Twitch thing tomorrow, like a live stream tomorrow night, where uh, we record a tune or two. We've got some special guests that are, have, have uh, agreed to come down and jam with us. And uh, man, it's gonna be super fun. I'll post a link. Um, Wookie, the drummer, the guy that's putting it all together, is gonna 
send me a link that I can tell you guys about it. So um, if you're bored tomorrow night and you just want to watch a bunch of hillbillies playing the studio, you're welcome. Okay, so, um, you know, uh, that little tune I was playing there, Just that's just, uh, you know, it's just a standard country progression. And then it goes into some other weird stuff. But all I was doing was going E, F sharp, A, B, right? And then uh, the opening bit was just E7 to D7. So, but look at this crazy lick. kind of gets you into like Nirvana meets Jerry Garcia land uh, kind of right there just some weird chords I just threw that in there just so I could have something fun to solo over and boy it'll trip you up too try that I should just play the loop for you one time and so you, you can have something to jam over it's, it's that's a little tricky right there but you know that that the end bit I went into the whole F B flat, E flat, A flat, which is is what kids, all you scholars out there. That's part of the circle of fifths, and uh, you probably, if you don't know about the circle of fifths, you should spend the rest of the night looking up what's going on with the circle of fifths because it is a very useful compositional tool. Um, as used by some of the greats. You know you know who was great at using fifths and fourths? is Steve Morse. Uh, I'm a huge fan, as you guys well know. And uh, I mean, just even if you took away his amazing guitar playing, just his composing, you know, brilliant, um, brilliant harmonic information happening there. The way, the, even if you heard a symphony playing Steve Morse's compositions, you would know it was his writing. You know, the way he used the fourths and fifths. Just amazing. Um, I'm probably on the third round of telling you guys this, but do you ever, did you ever hear my Steve Moore story? When I was a kid, we were we were in this pitiful band when we were kids, and we got a chance to open for Steve Morse at this dirty old Cleveland club called Peabody's Down Under, and it was a great music venue, um, and we were so excited to get a chance to open for him, and. Uh, I remember, like, just, you know, waiting for him to get there. I think he flew his own plane to the gig. You know, this was back in the 80s. And uh, he came up in the dressing room, and I, and I was just standing there. I couldn't believe it was really him. And I was like, I walked up to him, and I said, Hey, Steve, you want to jam? And he was like, no. And he, like, turned and walked away. <laughs> Old Uncle Larry, he was crushed when he was a kid. But, but you know, as a grown-ass man now, I respect the hell out of his brutal honesty. Because that's what you gotta do in this life. Um, you know, what the hell is he gonna learn from jamming with some 18 year old punk? So yeah, there that was a cool moment. And um, remember the days when you used to wait around outside venues by the tour bus just to see the people that played come out? Man, we used to do all that stuff just so I, mean, I remember seeing Alan Holdsworth a couple times at that club mind bending absolutely mind bending and uh, walked up to him saw him at the bar he liked his occasional cold beer too Alan Holdsworth did what a player Jesus you know the thing about Alan Holdsworth as I've said many times it's like he'd never listened to anybody else ever play a guitar he had his completely own style that had nothing to do with anything based in blues or anything. Amazing musician. Um, look at this. Look at this, man. 1958, Jimmy Brown rookie. 
This was a gift from a very special uh, watcher of the Uncle Larry show. He was very kind and he sent this card. And uh, I also have this cool. And you also see Jimmy Brown back there. He's my favorite, you know. He's got that signed photo. Look at this one. 1959 Bart Starr. Can you see that? Pretty cool, right? All right, guys. Uncle Larry, over and out. I'll post a link for that Twitch thing. If you guys are bored tomorrow night, you can watch. No big deal if you got something going on. It's only Thanksgiving. All right, see you.